Mr. Trump. So let me introduce to you the next President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Just forget it, we can't stand the guy anymore. Now, you're gonna like me, and we're gonna be back, and we're gonna do a great job for you. Most importantly, we're gonna get to that office, and we're gonna do the right thing. We're gonna do the right thing. So, a few things, a lot, so much has happened. You know, when we first came out, we were all talking together, and we were talking border security, which, oh, we're just doing so great with the border security. We're gonna build a wall, Mexico's gonna pay for the wall, we all know that. We're gonna security. And the drugs are gonna stop, and people are gonna come into the country, but they're gonna come into the country, they're gonna be legal, they're coming in legally, and that's all. That's all. And it affects Iowa so much, but, so we were talking about that. We're talking about repealing Obamacare, boom, it's gonna be repealed, it's gonna be replaced. I don't know if you've been seeing what's happening, but Obamacare is a total disaster. It's dying of its own weight. And by 17, meaning he'll be playing golf and I'll be working very hard. But by 17, it's dead. It's dead. You're not getting the people signed up. There's been a lot of talk about it and a lot of stories about it. Obamacare is dead, but we'll terminate it quicker than that. And we will come up with something that will be so good, so much better. Premiums are going through the roof. Deductibles are so high that unless you're close to death, you're never gonna get to use it. And even then, I don't think you're gonna get to use it, really. So, we're gonna take care of that. And by the way, we have a lot of good people. We have ethanol that nobody is really, like we have the ethanol, where are the ethanol people? I was here a month ago, I met with them all, and they do a fantastic job. I toured the plants, and they do a fantastic job, and it's so important. And it's another form of let's stay away from OPEC, and let's stay away from that Middle East stuff. It's so important, so I just want to... And actually, what I don't understand, because the one guy that's doing pretty good with me in Iowa is Ted Cruz. He's a nice guy. I mean, everything I say, he agrees with me. No matter what I say, I was going to do one really wild, but he agrees. But with the ethanol, really, it's, uh, he's got to come a long way because he's right now for the oil. But I understand that oil pays him a lot of money. He's got to be for oil, right? The oil companies give him a lot of money. So, but I'm with you. I'm with everybody. I'm with everybody. Look. I'm self-funding. I have no oil company. I have no special interest. I have no uh, lobbyists that want me. And you know, they're representing countries that are ripping off the country. They're representing companies that are ripping off our country. All I do is I'm going to be working for you, folks. We're going to do this thing together. We're going to make America so great. Thank you. And make it better than ever before. So, so important. So when we first started, I talked about China, how they're ripping us, and Japan, and Mexico. Mexico both at the border and in trade. They're taking so many of our companies. Nabisco's moving there with their big plant. Ford is moving there with a big plant. They took a big plant away from Tennessee, a great state. They took it away at the last moment. We're not gonna let that stuff. We're gonna do, we're gonna get it. We're gonna do what we have to do, okay? But I talk about that, thank you. Oh, look at that group over there. 
Thank you. But I talk about that, and I talk about it a lot. The fact is that about two and a half weeks ago with Paris, I'm speaking a little bit differently now. Believe me, I can take care of China in my back pocket. That's easy for me. That's what I do. And we have all the cards. A lot of people don't know. You know, these politicians, they don't understand. We have the cards. You know, with China, our people pay tax. They pay no tax. It's not supposed to be that way. They call it a tariff because it sounds better. But we will take care of that. We'll take care of all of that. It's a, what happened is with Paris, there's a different mindset. And when the polls came out last week, my numbers went way up because people felt more secure with me. Yeah. Now maybe it had to do with that. But my poll numbers went up. And you ever notice whenever there's something that I do that's proper but controversial, they say, ah, oh, now he's gone. It's it. That's it. That's the end. I won't go over all of the different things because maybe you'll change your minds, right? So I won't. But they'll say, that's it. It's over. And then they come in, sir, your poll numbers went up nine points this week. I said, did it? I have to do what's right. I have to do what's right. And you know what? If I don't make it, then I'll make it. I have a good life. We all hopefully have a good, good life. I have a great family, nice people, wonderful people. They love me, I think. I hope. I think. But I have a great family, and I built a great business. Fact, thank you. Who is that person? I love that person. Stand up. I love that person. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. There's such spirit, you know, like this, there's such spirit. No matter where I go, it's, you know, we go to Dallas with 20,000 people, 35,000 people in Mobile, Alabama, 20,000 people in Oklahoma. Wherever we go in Iowa, we have these crowds. Yeah, this is supposed to be for in and around. It's supposed to be like a record. It is big, and yet it feels intimate. It feels good. And we're going to start taking questions. But I just want to say, so I changed a couple of weeks ago. When I saw Paris, I changed. And a big, big part of what I'm doing now is safety and security and smartness and smartness. So interesting, you know, the slogan is Make America Great Again, and I'm adding, Make America Great Again and Safe Again, because we don't feel safe anymore. And the problem we have now, that we never had to this extent, is the power of weaponry. It's the power. It's the tremendous power. You know, a hundred years ago, I would have said, let's not go there. I said, don't go there anyway. I said it strongly, don't go, you're going to destabilize the Middle East. But the fact is, right now, we're gonna have to do things because we have some really, really sick degenerates. And they're degenerates. And the press, look at all those cameras going, all live, all, you know. Nobody else has cameras on this. They can make a speech a hundred times, they make a speech. Nobody cares. Look at this. Don't worry, they never pan the crowd. You know they never, they have me. That's why I'm walking around, I figure I'm walking around, maybe they'll get there. They never pan the crowd. I tell them, pan the crowd, they never do. I always go, my wife, she goes home. I had a crowd, 7,000 people last week. More! 7,000 people. And in a confined space, it was, they had 3,000 people outside that couldn't get in. My wife said, darling, the speech was excellent. Did you have many people there? I said, she said, well, they never leave your face. They keep it purposely. But I'll tell you, I figured the cameras maybe are a little screwed up where you can't move them, right? But every time there's a protester, well, I'm protesting, and it can be in the back left-hand corner of the room. The cameras swoop over there. It's true. It's true.
I used to think they couldn't look, you know, there, maybe there's something with the crazy computers. You know, in the old days, everything was better, right? The car seats. You'd sit in your car, and you want to move forward or back, you press a button, bing, bing. Now you have to open up things, press a computer, it takes you 15 minutes. Well, the same thing I figured with cameras. I didn't think they moved. I figured they were fixed for certain reasons. And then I saw a protester, and those cameras were bent in positions like you wouldn't have believed possible. Uh, they're very dishonest people. Not all of them, but most of them. Most of them. The press is dishonest. I'll tell you, you have one of the most dishonest right here in your backyard. The Des Moines Register is the worst. reporter named Jacob. She is the worst. She, she goes in and she will write so it's such a misrepresentation. And so I don't care. I mean, who cares? So I'm saying it right in their backyard. They're failing anyway. They probably won't be in business in two years. They're losing. I think they're losing. Think. You know, it's funny. Every time the Des Moines Register does a poll, I always do badly. And I now, of course, I'm sure, I'm only doing this so they don't sue me, but I don't mind if they do it. I hope they sue me, because they don't have enough money to sue me, that's the good but, but I believe, and I may be wrong, in fact, I'll say I'm sure I'm wrong, but it's my opinion that they don't do it properly. Because, you know, they poll like three or four hundred people. I'll explain it. But I really believe if they, you know, if they lose 20 people, boom, in the pocket. No, oh, Trump, oh, forget that one, forget that one. Now, I don't know that they do that. Do you do that, Des Moines Register? But every time I have a Des Moines Register poll, I do poorly. I also do poorly with the Bloomberg polls. I don't know why. But we had a great poll come in, CNN, last couple of days, where we're leading, I think, by 13 points in, in Iowa. In Iowa. And then we have another one coming where we're doing well. But I think Des Moines Register somebody is, said it's coming out sometime. I just tell you, watch. Trump disappears. I think we're going to do so well. I think we're actually going to even do better. You know, we're leading in most of the poll. We're leading in every poll. In, no, every poll. Except Iowa, there was one poll. There was one poll, Monmouth. I never even heard Monmouth. What the hell is Monmouth? What is Monmouth? Explain it. I don't like Monmouth. You know why I don't like it? Because they always treat me badly or something. But I, I only like polls that treat me well. But, but we're doing so well. Nationwide, we're leading every poll by tremendous. We just had one in Georgia, 44. 44. That's, think of that. That's 44 with 15 people. I'd take 44 if we had three people. I don't think I'd take it if we had two people, but I think I'd take it if we had But 44, a CBS came out, as you know, you probably saw the New York Times two days ago, and we're 35 to a small number. We're killing everybody in every poll. We're just one little outlier here, and I'm sure, again, when Des Moines comes out, I'm sure it'll be a negative, because I don't believe, I don't believe that poll. Uh, but, but we are going to win, and I tell you what, honestly, I was so important to me. I could say, oh, let's not do, I am an evangelical, I'm a Christian, I'm a Presbyterian, I'm a Presbyterian. I love Billy Graham, Franklin Graham came out with the most beautiful statements, Franklin Graham. He was so incredible. He came out, I don't know if you all saw the statements he came out with about Trump, right? Stand up, witness. Right? Come on, stand up. You look great. Don't worry about it. Is that right? He was so incredible. Franklin Graham was amazing. The son of Billy Graham, who was, you know, there's nobody, nobody that I've ever seen. Billy Graham was unbelievable. If anybody's gone to his crusades, they were incredible. But, so I, I think we're going to do, you know, we're doing really well with the evangelicals. And, and by the way, and again, I do like Ted Cruz. But not a lot of evangelicals come out of Cuba, in all fairness. It's true. Not a lot come out. But I like him nevertheless. But I think we're going to do great, and we are doing great with evangelicals. We're doing great with the Tea Party, leading with the Tea Party.
And we're doing fantastic with old and young and middle, and we're doing great with everybody. And so it's very important for me to win Iowa. Now, I could take, put less pressure on myself, and I could say, oh, I don't care about Iowa, I don't care. But I do care. I do care so much about it. That's why I'm here all the time. And then lies happened. You know, when I was using Iowa, they lied so much. I said, the people of Iowa can't be that stupid or dumb. The people of the country can't. I'm trying to make a point, right? So I said, the people of the country can't be that stupid. Well, they cut the country out. So it's referring to Iowa. I love you people. Remember that. I, remember. I was talking about something. And I won't even mention what I'm talking about. Because the guy I'm talking about and was, talk was actually a very good guy. But I will say this. We want to win Iowa so big. Because if I win Iowa, I think we run the table. I really do. I think we win the table. We're going to run Because we're leading big in New Hampshire, every poll. Big. Big in New Hampshire. Christy got an endorsement from this crazy newspaper up there. It's the weirdest deal I've ever seen. And, and was, uh, you know, the paper that was in his state called up, said, are you sure about that? Nobody ever called us. <laughs> they can't believe it. And we could go into that, but it's irrelevant. But we're leading New Hampshire big. We're leading in South Carolina in like monstrous numbers. We're leading the SEC, Nevada. We're leading in Texas. We're, we're leading everywhere. We're leading big in Florida. Now you have Rubio, nice guy by the way. You have Rubio, and he is a nice guy. But got to vote. You know, when the people put you in position to be a senator, you got to go and vote. You can't be the number one person that doesn't vote in this Senate. You got to say, hey, you know, I'm a young guy. I want to go and vote. He should stay there a little longer. He's a good guy. Stay there. Go in, vote. Create a nice record. But I don't know. How's he doing in Iowa? Not too good, right? He's not doing well. How's, he, how's Rubio doing? Not good. I mean, it seems like a two-person race right now. It seems like a two-person. It's an important race. So I just want to let you know it's very important. So, with all of that, if we win Iowa, a lot of people say, we just go through, I think we win virtually every state in the union, and it's over. <laughs> over. Now, we're going to take questions, and one of the questions will be, well, what about the Republican establishment? The establishment's got a problem. Yeah. It's sort of like the fighters, you know, the great champions. Sometimes they'll go into a hometown of the guy they're fighting, and they'll say, you know, we never want to get a decision, we go for the knockout, because the knockout is the knockout. Because you get a lot of bad decisions. I know a lot about the world of sports, believe me. And they go into a hometown, to fight, and it's a decision. And they say, oh, we're in a problem. And they lose the fight that they won. The only way they win the fight, definitely, knockout. So if we win Iowa, I think we're gonna win everything after that. So I think it's gonna show how important Iowa is. And, and one thing, and I'll, I'll pledge this. I'll pledge this to Iowa, even if I lose, I'll pledge it, okay? I don't think I've ever said that in my life. But if we get and we go and win, I was staying right where it is in the chain. It's not moving. You know, there's a big move. There's a big move on to move Iowa into a much further back position by the establishment. Folks, I win. It's not happening. Okay? You're staying right there. Because it's great. It's great. You know, it's great. And if I don't do that, Tana's going to be very angry at me. Right, Tana? How has she done? Is she incredible? Thank you. I appreciate it. The whole staff. I mean, uh, Chuck and Stephanie and where's my big guy? Where the hell is he? Boy, how good is he on television, right? Where the hell is he? Huh? Where is he? Sam. Big Sam. Come here, Sam. Come here. Look at the size of this. Come here, Sam. Look at him. Big Sam. Come here. 
Are we going to win Iowa, Sam? We're going to win Iowa. We're going to win Iowa. We're going to put them away. We're going to stand on their chest. We're going to step on their throats. We're going to be out here. We're going to run up the score. We're going to have the biggest victory in the history of the caucuses in the state of Iowa. Okay. He did so well. I don't want him falling when he's leaving, right? Beautiful. Thank you, Sam. It's a great people. And I'm going to be here that night. I will be here with you. I'm going to be here that week and maybe a couple of weeks before all the time. So I'm going to be here because I'm going to watch you. I'm not going to give you any chance that we lose it. Okay? So let's take a few questions and we'll have a little fun. And uh, we just did a big interview with CNN just before this. And you know, Hillary, was Hillary missing today? What happened? She was two hours late. She, no, did you hear? I just said, now I may be wrong, and you know, if I'm one minute off, they'll call me, because they love Hillary. But they love her. You know why? I don't know why. Why? I'm trying to think. Now, I heard she was a couple of hours late. Everybody left. You know what happened? She was sleeping, I'm telling you. She couldn't get out of bed. She was sleeping. She was sleeping this way. Okay, let's take some questions. Go ahead. So, Mr. Trump, we have Sue from the AARP. She's got I did. Hi, Sue. Hi, Mr. Trump. Th uh, good to see you again. Thanks for coming. Thank back. you. Thank you. The Social Security Administration reports that by 2034, if nothing is done to update Social Security, the average Iowan is going to lose in 2034. 15, 25% of their benefits, which calculates to about $4,000 each year. So our question to you is this. What will you do to update Social Security? What are your specific solutions to update Social Security to put it on stable ground for future generations? Great, I'm so glad you asked me that question. And so, you've been paying into secure Social Security and Medicare, by the way, let's put it in the same, because Medicare does work with both. You have tremendous waste, fraud, and abuse. We're gonna take care of that, okay? But we're not going to cut your Social Security and we're not cutting your Medicare. We're going to take jobs back from all these countries that are ripping us off. We're going to become a wealthy country again. And we're going to be able to save the Social Security. We're not taking it back. Thank you. Now, I can't believe this number, but I read over, who was the man that told me the number? Over six million people, I can't believe it, are aged 112 and over are getting Social Security. Who's the man that told me that? He's around here someplace. He said, oh, Mr. Trump. But I heard it. I read it. A tremendous, like, six million people are getting Social Security. They're dead, meaning somebody else is picking up. Them. Because we know, who is that man? He's over there someplace. Okay. Six million people, more. And I read that. He just came up to me tonight. I said, now it's an amazing statistic. The press is going to have to check it, because what do I know? But can you imagine, you have six, now we know there's not six million, there may be one, but there's not six million. Anybody in this room 112 or over? Because if they are, I want to shake your hand. But, so six million people, over 112 years old, picking up Social Security, and that's the beginning. So there's tremendous waste, fraud, and abuse. What we're going to do is we're going to save Medicare, we're going to save Social Security. You're going to get your pay. We're not going to raise the age, and we're not going to do all the things that everyone else is talking about doing. They're all talking about doing it, and you don't have to. We're going to bring our jobs back. We're going to make our economy incredible again. My tax, my tax proposal, which is in, and in great detail in terms of policy, and it's gotten tremendous reviews from a lot of people, a lot of great groups. But but we are going to cut taxes tremendously for the middle class and for businesses. Because our middle class, our middle class is being decimated. And Sue, so when that happens, you're gonna see an economy that takes off. We're gonna get rid of a lot of that debt, if not all of it, but we're gonna get rid of it as soon as, you know, we're at 19 trillion going to 21 trillion right now. You know, if you go back eight or nine years, trillion wasn't even a word that anybody knew. And now it's like routine. So we are going to save your Social Security without cuts. We're gonna bring the economy back. We're gonna make ourselves rich again. A woman said to me in New Hampshire recently, she said, Mr. Trump, I'm voting for you, I love you, but 
it's very crude when you say you're going to make our country rich again. I said, I know it's crude. It sounds bad. But many things I say are crude. It sounds bad. But we can't make our country great again unless we make our country rich again. We can't let everybody in the world rip us off. Remember, remember we, we built China. The money they took out of our country, we rebuilt China. You go there, they have bridges all over. They have bridges like the George Washington Bridge. Maybe I shouldn't mention that particular, but like the George, bigger. Like the George Washington Bridge. Only a few people got that one, that's okay. But we, they have bridges going up there. We have rebuilt China. They've taken our jobs, they've taken our base, they've taken our manufacturing all over the place. They've taken our money. They've taken our money. Not gonna happen anymore, folks. Not gonna happen anymore. Not gonna happen. I know the great business people. We have the greatest business people in the world. Guys like Carl Icahn, he calls me. Donald, I wanna help, I wanna help. The smartest people call me. We're not gonna use a special interest guy, a donor. We use donors to negotiate with China. Because he gave some guy, like, you know, whoever it might be. Because, again, I'm the only one that's self-funding my campaign. Everybody else isn't. And when these guys, when these guys give money to politicians, to a large extent they own those politicians. They will do whatever the hell the special interests and the donors want. It's not gonna happen with me. So, Social Security, we're saving it. Medicare, we're saving it. We're gonna make our country rich, okay? Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you.